Hola, ¿qué tal? I'm Roberto Martinez, State Historian of New Mexico. This is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. Well, 1680 did not just mark the uh, Pueblo Revolt. In a sense, you could say it was the end of Oñate's era, the end of uh, Oñate's experiment, if we want to call it that. It started in 1598 and it ended in 1680. Um, that was the end of uh, Spain's rule in New Mexico, at least temporarily. Um, Governor Termin had taken refugees down to Guadalupe del Paso, and um, these folks were the descendants of uh, the 50 or so uh, colonists that remained in New Mexico in the early 1600s. And so what happens is a good number of them hightail it south into what's now Mexico, Nueva España, uh, they, they said, we're out of here. We're not going back there. We're not going back to New Mexico. Uh, that uh, Pueblo revolt was horrible. It was violent. It, uh, I lost family and friends and loved ones. And now uh, uh, I'm taking my family and we're going to live somewhere else. So it was a problem because the, the population of New Mexico uh, uh, at that time, the, the Hispano Spanish population was not a lot. Um, so to lose a bunch of those folks was devastating. Uh, the ones who stayed uh, in Guadalupe del Paso, this is the colony in exile, okay? And they're there um, living, waiting for Spain to do something, to to send a savior, uh, uh, someone who will uh, retake New Mexico. But it will take a while. Governor Otermin, a year later in 1681, he takes uh, some soldiers from uh, Guadalupe del Paso and comes north to see if he can take back New Mexico, but he is unsuccessful. The Pueblo people are quite happy to not have Spanish rule, and uh, so uh, he is able to uh, grab uh, people from Isleta Pueblo to take down... Um, whether they went on their own or by force um, is uncertain, but nonetheless, uh, this is the start of Isleta del Sur in what is now El Paso, the, the Pueblo. These are relatives, cousins of the Isleta Pueblo people uh, in New Mexico. So these people are living in uh, difficult situations. We have documents. They, uh, we know that the New Mexicans are... Uh, accounted for the ones who stayed in Guadalupe del Paso. They um, are described as poor. Um, they're, they're, they're in tattered clothes. It actually describes them as desnudos, uh, naked, but it, it's not likely that they're running around naked uh, for years and years and years. They're probably just not uh, dressed very well, so they're considered uh, shabbily dressed. Uh, but nonetheless, they are down there, and, and, and the people they're living amongst are, are primos, their cousins, uh, 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 people who had uh, uh, come from New Mexico to settle in the mid-1600s, and then people from Mexico with uh, different names like Marungo, uh, a branch of Esquivel people come to settle in the area. So it, it's a mix of people who are contributing to New Mexico at that time. Um, up north, uh, the Pueblos are... Uh, trying to get back to where they once belonged, a living, a Puebloan a lifestyle. But Pope wants to uh, uh, get rid of everything Spanish. And in some ways, he, he succeeds. Um, uh, there's no more Catholic Church. Uh, there's no more governor, although we have accounts that say that he actually started to act like a Spanish governor, uh, going from Pueblo to Pueblo, uh, collecting tax and tribute. So... Um, Human nature is funny that way, but we do know that um, when he tried to uh, get rid of Spanish animals like horses, pigs, goats, sheep, or foods like wheat and barley or uh, onions and garlic, that, um, that was less successful. These were uh, things that the, the Pueblo people had accepted uh, from uh, the Spanish. And so it was going to be a little bit more difficult to get the Pueblo people to stop riding horses or to stop herding sheep. These are uh, cross-cultural exchanges that 
we're not going to be undone. Add to all of this the fact that there are other people starting to come into the area besides the Spanish, and they are Apache, Navajo, native warriors who are coming up from Mexico, the Pacheria, and they are exerting some pressures on this area because they have horses, they have weapons. And so things are starting to change. It's not a, as simple as Pueblo and Spanish. You also have uh, warring native groups that are coming in. They want access to resources. They want animals. Um, so you have this uh, tension now uh, between other Native American groups uh, coming in um, between 1680 and 1690. Also, there are people east of New Mexico starting to make their presence known. They're French and they are British. Uh, the French and British colonists in places like Louisiana, uh, what's now Alabama, and of course the East Coast, they're uh, starting to uh, explore west um, and Spain is aware of this. So Spain knows that she has got to maintain a strong foothold in the most northern part of her North American empire, which is New Mexico. So plans are underway to um, retake New Mexico. Um, in 1600, it was important to convert uh, the Pueblo people. That was the view that the, the crown and the church had. Now it was important to protect uh, mining areas to the south and places like Paral uh, from foreign invaders like British and French people. So that was one reason that New Mexico had to be retaken. Also, word was starting to spread south um, that the Pueblo people had succeeded in uh, rebelling against the Spanish and kicking them out. And Spain knew that that was a very bad uh, PR, that if it could happen in New Mexico, then maybe it could happen in parts of Nueva España, Mexico. Uh, it could happen maybe in the Caribbean and in South America. And then there could be real problems, especially if it gets out to the Philippines, uh, that the Spanish could be removed in that way. So by uh, the early 1690s, uh, the crown in Spain and then the, uh, uh, the viceroy in Mexico City it's decided that New Mexico has to be reconquered and retaken. So it's in this time period that a man named Diego de Vargas, Don Diego de Vargas, was appointed a governor. He was from Madrid, Spain, from a wealthy family, and he had experience as a soldier and as an administrator uh, south in Mexico. So when he gets to Guadalupe del Paso, um, one of the first things he does is he has to put down some uh, uh, Native American rebellions that are starting to take place in the area, as you can imagine. Uh, they're, they're just following the lead of the Pueblo people. So he does that. He gets soldiers. He has uh, soldiers that he's recruited. Um, and he puts down uh, these Native American revolts around El Paso. And then he goes about gathering up those New Mexico colonists. And he realizes he doesn't have enough. So he takes it upon himself to go south to places like Casas Grandes and um, uh, Valle de San Bartolomé in what's now Chihuahua State in Mexico. And he tries to get these people back. I mean, he has uh, royal orders, decrees that they have to come back to New Mexico, but th they won't. Uh, um, I'm paraphrasing what he said in one of the documents. He said it would be easier for the Inquisition to convert a heretic than to get these people to go back to New Mexico. So he does an inventory of the people, a census of the people with names like Martin Serrano, Martinez, um, Chavez, Baca, um, Montoya, Romero, all those names, Lucero, uh, Garcia de Noriega, Trujillo, and... Um, he then contacts the viceroy in Mexico City and says, I need more families for this to be an effective recolonization. So two things happen. Vargas 
takes 100 soldiers, uh, uh, Spanish soldiers, uh, names that uh, you should recognize like Ulibarri and Roival. He takes them up to northern New Mexico and he gets to Santa Fe. And he starts the process of attempting to make peace with the Pueblo people. All the while, um, the uh, viceroy in Mexico City, uh, he appoints a priest to start recruiting Spanish families in the documents called Españoles Mexicanos, Mexican Spaniards, to come north and help with the reconquest and recolonization of New Mexico. We'll talk about that next time. Take care, be well, and be safe. Adios!